We praise Allah. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Allah. We seek Allah's help. And we seek Allah's guidance. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil and the accursed shaitan and from the evils of our own selves and from the evils of the actions that we have done in our lives. And we bear witness and we testify that there is no God except Allah and that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his last and final messenger. We send praises and benedictions upon Al-Mustafa, the chosen one, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his beloved family and the righteous companions all together. And we ask Allah to bless him and to put peace on him just as he did the family of Ibrahim the forefather of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah tells us, dear believers, you and I, those who are Muslims, oh you who believe, have consciousness of Allah Azza wa Jal, meaning taqwa. Have consciousness, be aware of Allah Azza wa Jal, and do not die except as what? People who submitted themselves to Allah. People who did their best to submit themselves to Allah. That is what a Muslim is. And do not die except in a state of submission to Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah allow and make our last deed be of something that was worshipping Him. Say Ameen. Allah also reminds us inside of His glorious Quran. He says for all of you, meaning you and I who believe, have consciousness of Allah meaning be, be aware of him and to say words that hit the mark meaning speak the truth for therefore if you do so when speaking the truth it has an effect and that effect is Allah will force you in a way that you will capitulate toward him that you will be inclined to doing so he will change your actions and you will start to do good deeds and from this when you start to do these good deeds Allah will bless you and He will forgive you of all the wrong that we continue to do day in and day out. And whoever obeys Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has truly won the ultimate victory. They have achieved the championship and they have overcome and they've accomplished the goal which is receiving the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. That is the number one ultimate goal for you and I. And in the best way to achieve that is through the prism of taqwa, of God consciousness. Allah has brought you and I together again on another blessed day of Friday, the day in which Yawm Qiyamah, the day of judgment, will be commenced. To be reminded that this is the ultimate day that we are preparing ourselves for. Alhamdulillah. It is a blessing that Allah has established this upon the community. For we are human beings and we continue to forget. Today, we'd like to speak about, Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us to see the month of Ramadan. And may Allah accept, say Ameen. And so typically, as my neighbors, they came to me and they are from Afghanistan, mashallah. And this is something that you really find within the Arab culture, especially being from the West, we get to see a good taste of something that they have, this barakah that they have, these blessings. So our neighbors, they come by and they actually invited themselves into our house, mashallah. What terrible neighbors are we? And so they sat with us and they came and did what is called bushra. They come and they visit and they send blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They'll bring you a meal for you to sit together and to remember Allah and what He has bestowed on us for the completion of Ramadan. So people are going back and forth during Eid and we're visiting, we're visiting. And the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam tells us to do this, to go and visit the people who are close to you, to go and visit the sick. And so, after being blessed with this, not even two days being removed from the Eid celebration. MashaAllah. 
many of us, but I would just like to share a personal story with you. I got another visitor. Soon as I woke up from my sleep, I had to wake up and I had to spit to my left three times. And that visitor was who? Shaitan. Subhanallah. As we know, during the month of Ramadan, the shaitan is locked up. During the month of Ramadan, the gates of paradise are open, the gates of the hellfire are closed, and the big jinn, the ones who cause all types of mischief within the land and in between people, they are locked up during this month. And so, I took it as a bushra, I said, Alhamdulillah, I had one of the worst dreams that I could ever have. And when I woke up, I was extremely happy. Again, I spit to my left, and sadly for shaitan, Alhamdulillah, he woke me up for Salat al-Fajr. But Muslims, what is the point of why we're saying this? Why would I ever say that it was a bushra, it was a glad tiding that the shaitan came and visited? Because Allah Azza wa Jalla wants you and I to be aware of our clear enemy. Because when you are aware of your clear enemy, you can succeed because he is the one who what? He lies, waiting. Waiting and to set you up inside of a trap to get you to fold. MashaAllah, oh, you just finished Ramadan. Let's go and hop on a brother. This is how shaitan is. So today, we'd like to focus on from the prism of having taqwa, but through the lens of knowing our enemy and being aware of him. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al rajim. When you know about your enemy, you know better how to conquer that enemy. So let us start, insha'Allah, from the glorious Qur'an where the shaytan, he makes a promise. بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ قَالَ فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ سِرَابِ so just to summarize and very short to keep it concise the shaitan the devil he has a conversation with Allah and because he didn't seek repentance from Allah Azza wa Jal regarding this human being who had been created and he didn't make sajda as he was appointed to do he says oh Allah since you've made me go astray I'm going to sit on every single path waiting for you and I. Continuing, he says, he says, actually, I'm going to sit on your straight path now. This is extremely important for you and I because what? We are doing every single thing to be on the straight path. We ask Allah for this guidance to be on Sirat al Mustaqim at least 17 times a day when we do our five salawat a day. So as Muslims, we're striving to be on this straight path. So guess what? This enemy is going to be on that path as he's made a promise. Continuing, he says, then he says, so then he tells Allah what is his plan to do with the human beings meaning you and I who are always wayfaring to be on the straight path of Allah Azza wa Jal being a Muslim he makes the promise and he says and while I sit and I wait for them I'm going to come to them from before them I'm going to come to them from behind them I'm going to come to them from their right and from their left. And oh Allah, you will not find most of them grateful. So, going back to this memory or this bushra, when the shaitan came and he visited me, I was thankful to Allah because I said, after all this peace I've been having in Ramadan, you know, no tit for tat back and forth with the wife. There was ease. Easy conversations. It's easy to have patience. And then I started to notice these things like, 
Subhanallah, why are these things happening? But the dream, the dream first reminded me, oh yes, the shaitan, he had been locked up and now he's free. And Allah has made the month of Ramadan easy in a sense. And now he's back, dear Muslims. So this message for you and I is to make sure that we do our best to have what? Taqwa of Allah. Verily, the promise of shaitan is true and Allah granted this promise to shaitan. That he will be able to li live as long as humankind lives. And he will try to thwart us off of the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he says that most of them will not be of those who are grateful to you, O Allah. And so our, our reminder should be, because Ramadan has ended, it does not mean that we revert back to the old ways that we used to practice before Ramadan. That's what the shaitan loves. That's what the shaitan wants from you and I. And it is for you and I to take these signs. And so what will be these signs? And inshallah, this is, these, these next verses that we want to get in is, I want you to imagine baking a cake. And just like when visitors come over, you want to make sure if you're cooking them something, that you're going to produce something that's extremely excellent. Something that is very palatable, something that is sweet. And you're gonna observe your guests and make sure that that cake that you made for them made them happy. So we're gonna talk about what I call the recipe that Allah Azza wa Jal has given us in Surah Al-Baqarah as most of us know these verses so we'll recite them inshallah and then we'll take a moment to reflect upon them again what is the recipe in order to know how to have this taqwa of Allah for therefore if we have taqwa even when we see our enemy we'll be reminded of who? Allah Azza wa Jal بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون. So before we continue with this recipe, let us explain some of it. Allah says, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. That is the book, meaning the glorious Quran. That is the recipe book, book my dear uh, uh, brothers and sisters. And within that book, within that guide, that recipe book, there is no doubt. If you follow it, you will bake this ultimate cake that we're talking about. You will bake a cake that is pleasing. But this cake, with no anthropomorphism within it, is for Allah Azza wa Jalla. So Allah starts to describe these people and these characteristics, these ingredients that are needed to make this successful cake. He says those who believe in the unseen. Meaning the shaitan, he lives in the unseen. Right? The malaika, they are in the unseen. Huh? Paradise is in the unseen. The hellfire is in the unseen. We believe in these things because Allah Azza wa Jal has told us to. And Allah Azza wa Jal has given you and I an imagination to be able to know. Whenever we step in the bathroom, why is it that we say certain dua of protection? Why when leaving or entering our house, we say dua of certain protections? Because being normal, we think that, hey, mashallah, this is just my house, I'm walking into it. But the shayateen are around, just like how you and I are congregating right now. There's a real life that is being lived before you and I. And so when we take this recipe of Allah Azza wa Jal, we will be more so inclined in understanding that we took heed to what Allah said. Can, could you imagine? Whenever you enter your restroom, the Muslims, especially in the time of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, were extremely shy. That even while relieving themselves, themselves, they will cover themselves. 
None of us in our, in our right state of mind would ever use a restroom in front of someone else. But if we think about al ghayb and those who live inside of that realm that we can't see, at times they are present. So Allah gives us this recipe so that we don't become embarrassed. And Allah actually clothes us, even while being unclothed within this world, so that these other entities can't see us. And the focus of today's khutbah again is about the shaitan and how to avert ourselves from our enemy. But again, we want to continue with the rest of our recipe. So those who believe in what the unseen, that's extremely important because usually, as we see the rest of, the, the rest of these recipes that we'll continue to see in this page of Surah Al-Baqarah, because they are actual, because we're able to touch them, it's easier for us to believe in them. And majority of the time, we forget about Al-Ghayb and believing in the unseen. And if we were more aware of the unseen, we'd have much more piety. Continuing. Oh, finishing that verse, Allah says also, so these people who believe in the unseen, those who, what? Establish salah. We establish the prayer, alhamdulillah, and those who give out of what Allah has given you, meaning from your risk. It doesn't necessarily just have to be money. It can be allowing someone or travelers to sleep in a room uh, inside of your home, donating a car for some whatever reason, whatever Allah has given you that you share that thing because ultimately it is Allah's. Continuing with, the, with these verses, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِن قَبَلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ هم يوقنون. Following our recipe, continuing what that recipe is, Allah also says, they are those people who believe in that which was sent to you, O Muhammad وسلم, meaning this glorious Quran. And they also believe in the traditions, in the books, in the prophets that were sent before you. And they also believe in the Akhirah, meaning that there is a life after this life that we're living right now. That there's a paradise and there's a hellfire. May Allah, we seek Allah's protection from the, from the hellfire. Say Ameen. And lastly, before finishing this page and knowing what is our recipe, Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So everybody who contains all of these things, those who believe in the unseen, but they practice on that belief. Those who establish the prayer, those who give out of what they have been given by Allah, those who believe in this Qur'an and those who believe in the prophets and messengers that have been sent before, those who believe in the afterlife, if they take all of these qualities or all of these ingredients, Allah says they will be successful and they have obtained guidance from their Lord. And truly, those are the most successful people. So Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The message in order for us to take control of our enemy and the one that we seem to forget the most is being reminded that there is a clear and avowed enemy. And that is shaitan. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim And it is for you and I to take this recipe of Allah Azza wa Jal and to implement it. And today, inshallah, the main focus being again is the unseen and that there are true realities that are going on before you and I. And since we can't see that, or majority of us can't, let us use our imaginations and know that the promise of Allah is true. If we believe and do and follow what Allah Azza wa Jal has given us in His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will be successful. And out of the many things that they have given us is to have belief in the unseen. Now simply believing, alhamdulillah, will get you through. But it is better to implement and to act on everything that you know about the unseen for being, for being true. 
Just like when we leave outside of this mosque, we say what? A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim wa junoodihi. When we step out of the mosque, we say we seek refuge in Allah from shaitan and his army. Because why? You are on the straight path. You are in Juma. Or you're leaving the mosque. And so they're waiting. They're not vying or messing with people who are not on the straight path. They've already sent themselves off. They want to knock you and I off of the straight path of Allah Azza wa Jal. So take heed to the words of Allah. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Take this time to seek the forgiveness of Allah and to be reminded of Him and we will conclude with our second khutbah after this break insha'Allah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله we praise Allah, the Lord of the worlds. He is the safety net for those who have consciousness of Him. And there is no animosity towards any of us and those who have taqwa of Allah except for those who practice oppression. And we believe that there, and we bear witness that there is no God except Allah and that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is his last and final messenger. A quick reminder before we end. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my dear brothers and sisters, has given us a little bit more zest for us to add on to that recipe that Allah Azza wa Jal has given you and I. Regarding believing in the unseen, establishing the prayer, giving out of what Allah has given to us, believing in the books that Believing in this Quran that has been sent to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, but not only believing in it, but implementing it. Believing in the previous books and the previous messengers that have been sent. Believing in the afterlife. The Prophet, peace be upon him, has given us something because naturally, when this enemy is trying to harm us, sometimes there may be some chinks in our armor from the arrows that they shoot at us, metaphorically. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, and before we say this as well, when they try and thwart us off of the path, off the straight path of Allah, naturally we are human beings and we're going to forget and we're going to have shortcomings. But just as Adam السلام, when he turned back to Allah, the shaitan didn't. So when we commit wrong, we make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is the ultimate tool that will allow us to have that taqwa of Allah. We seek Allah's forgiveness. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in an authentic hadith. Ittaki Allah haythu ma kunta wa atbi'i sayyi'ata al-hasanata tamhuha. وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخَلْقٍ حَسَنٍ The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ has advised you and I, dear brothers and sisters, that whenever you and I make a mistake, firstly he says, have consciousness of Allah. This should be our normal state. This is why we do salawat, to make the heart filled with nur in the light of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. This is why we read the Qur'an to fill our hearts with the nur of Allah Azza wa Jal so that we be reminded of Him. That's why we have these connections. That's why we join as brothers and sisters together so that we are reminded of Allah Azza wa Jal. So first he says have taqwa, have consciousness of Allah. 
wherever you happen to be, in any place that you are, whether it be in your car, on an airplane, in a bus, in the ocean, underneath the water, above it, on land, wherever you are, have consciousness of Allah. And if you commit a wrong, follow it up directly with a good deed, for that good deed erases the wrong. And in between people, establish good and beautiful relationships and do good to people. Alhamdulillah, this has been our message for today, dear brothers and sisters. As being a brother who wants goodness for himself, he wants the same exact thing for every single one of you. May Allah forgive us of our sins and our wrongdoings and guide us to the straight path. May Allah allow us to be true Muslims in its true sense. May Allah grant us a sincere connection with the glorious Quran. May Allah put it inside of all of our hearts to be a walking Quran. May Allah put it inside of our hearts that we truly care to live by every single ayah, every single harf, every single harakah of the glorious Qur'an and that we implement it into our lives. May Allah allow us to be the same way within following in tra the, the traces of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. That we try to align our feet with every single footprint that has been left of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. We ask Allah to raise the afflictions of those around the world who are being tested tremendously outwardly and inwardly. We ask Allah to raise uh, the affliction of the despondent person, those who have afflictions with the mind, the body, and the soul. We ask Allah to relieve the tribulations of all people of all lands around the entire world. And we ask and we call out to all of those who practice oppression to read the glorious kitab of Allah and to seek refuge in Allah. For surely if you do not turn back to Allah, those who will practice oppression against others and those who practice oppression against themselves. May Allah grant us a serious and a true tawbah, a true repentance back to Him. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammadin abdika wa rasulika al al umi wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammadin kama salaita ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima fil alameen innaka hamidun majeed Allahumma a'azzil a'azzal a'izzal islama wa ansur al muslimin Allahumma a'azzil islama wa ansur al muslimin Allahumma a'azzil a'azzil أعز الإسلام وانصر المسلمين اللهم كن لإخواننا المسلمين في المشارق الأرض والمغاربها اللهم كن لإخواننا المسلمين في المشارق الأرض والمغاربها اللهم كن لإخواننا المسلمين في المشارق الأرض والمغاربها إن الله أمر بالثلاث ونهى عن الثلاثة truly Allah commands us by three things and he forbids us of three things. In Allah Yamaru bin Adali wal Ihsani wa Ita Iddin Kurba wa Yaha wa Yanha Anil Fahsha iwal Munkari wal Bahi Yaidu kum na alla kum tadakarun. Allah commands towards justice, doing good and generosity towards relatives and those who are close to you, the Muslims and people in general. And he forbids that which is shameful, blameworthy, and oppressive. He teaches you and I so that we may take heed, dear brothers and sisters. أُذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ الْعَظِيمَ يَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوهُ عَلَى نِعَمِهِ يَزِدَكُمْ وَلَا ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ Remember Allah much, the grand, the majestic. For Allah will, will remember you and I. And thank Allah much for every single thing and every single blessing that He has given you and I. And Allah will increase you and die, and the remembrance of Allah is the greatest. Aqimus